Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Bob Garashi, and I'm CEO of New Jersey Community Development Corporation, and absolutely delighted to be here this evening for a candidates forum with the Patterson Youth Council. And I should note a um, Board of Education candidates forum with the Patterson Youth Council. And what I love about this event each and every year that we help to facilitate it is that it is the one forum where members uh, or, or candidates for the Board of Education are able to talk directly with the students that they would like to represent and vice versa, where students get to talk directly with the candidates who would like to represent them uh, as far as the governance of our school system goes. And I think that makes it special. Um, each year, the uh, candidates are really gracious in, in giving their time, their precious time to members of the Youth Council. And I'm always impressed with the uh, thoughtful questions and comments that come from members of the Youth Council. I think what I'm gonna do just as a matter of housekeeping is let everyone know that I will uh, put everyone on mute, but you will be able to unmute yourselves. And that's just to um, keep uh, background noise uh, down to a minimum. Um, so with, with that being said, um, I'm going to turn it over to uh, David Gelman, who is one of the advisors for the Patterson Youth Council. And David in turn will toss it to um, one of our Patterson Youth Council leaders. And David, I'm gonna assume that the script, if you will, that we've put together will allow the candidates to introduce themselves before we begin the questioning. Is that correct? Yes, or <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay, very good. All right, without, uh, without any further ado, let me toss it to David Gelman. David? Thanks so much, Bob. I'm David Gelman with NJCDC. I'm not going to tell you what the Youth Council is because I'm gonna have one of them do that. Um, I just wanna echo Bob and, and thank the candidates for your time tonight. I, and I'm sure what was a busy day, week and month. Um, uh, you all know NJCDC and know the Patterson Youth Council. And I just want to wanna thank you for taking time out of your day and, and really encourage both sides. Uh, the candidates to not be shy, I don't think you will be, and our, and our students, as we always tell them, to don't be shy. This is your venue to connect with local people who are really responsible for a lot of what goes on in the city. So uh, like Bob said, we really appreciate this forum. If anything, like Bob said, we do this every year, but now everyone is kind of, no one's sitting up at the front of the stage, no one's in the audience, everyone is on a screen, so everyone can see each other's faces, I think. That's, uh, that's one positive that comes out of a virtual setting. I'm gonna pass it along to the PYC. I, I mean, like I said, we're gonna do our best to keep every question to two minutes. We will give you a 10 second warning, but uh, of course we facilitate a, a safe and robust discussion. Without further ado, uh, Hillary Trujillo, who is the president of our Patterson Youth Council. Hi, okay, can you guys hear me fine? Sorry. Okay, cool. So uh, welcome Board of Education candidates and thank you so much for giving your time to speak with our youth tonight. Our forum is sponsored by the Patterson Youth Council. It's a one year youth ambassador program that gives high school students from across the city an opportunity to be a premier voice for issues that matter to us. Uh, we engage in advocacy and educational events such as tonight as well as like community service leadership trips and other meetings with city leaders. Um, my name is Hillary Trujillo and I attend the Diana C. Lombosco STEM Academy. Tonight, along with our fellow youth and community members, we aim to engage you on topics that are important to us as the future of Patterson. We ask that you limit your responses to two minutes per question and we'll give a notification to signify a 10 second warning. And candidates, if you would like to introduce yourselves before your first question. Uh, and once again, just thank you for your time and support and we can get started. Hillary, I'm gonna cut you off before I pass it to Sophie. And just to clarify, we would love it if each candidate would answer each question and what we can do is go in different order each time um, that we can point out just so not one of you is going first not one of you is going last each time so i will see the first person is miss lemon um, and we're going to pass it to pyc member sophia for the first question uh okay so my question is what is your top priority on the school board if selected so 
I'll introduce just, myself firstly. Just, um, Let me interrupt. I'm sorry, just a reminder. I'm not sure we did it as smoothly as we might have wanted to, but can you take two minutes to introduce yourself uh, upon your first question? And then an additional two minutes to actually answer the question. Sound fair? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. So firstly, thank you to the Patterson Youth Council for having us. And Hillary, that was an amazing introduction. You did amazing. But I'm Shaniqua Lemon. I'm running for school board. This is my first time, you know, even ever thinking of running for office. Why am I doing this? I'm doing it because... Um, I'm an educator. I'm not a teacher in the Patterson system, but I've worked with early childhood. So that's your four and five-year-olds right before, you know, preschool, before you get to kindergarten. And I found a joy in that because I do believe that if you give kids the confidence and the ability to want to learn and, and create a, a learning environment that they, that they enjoy, it makes teaching easy and it makes learning fun. So that's where my passion is. And then three years ago, I started my own tutoring business. And just from tutoring kids here in Patterson and in other districts, you know, in Bergen County and here in Passaic County, I was coming across a lot of students who were behind and, you know, I couldn't catch them up. And I just felt like the district wasn't doing a good enough job. So in one of the questions, I know you're gonna ask, I don't want to give my whole intro as that, but um, I'm a, a, a entrepreneur here in Patterson. I started my own business and I'm doing this just because I believe I have a voice. I, I want to be a role model for students like you, someone who you all can relate to. So back to the first question, uh, what is my top priority if I get elected? So that was kind of in my answer. My top priority is to create a learning environment where children don't have to feel like you're being punished to go to school, where you don't have to have agony of going to school. You know, when I was in school, it wasn't perfect. You know, looking back, I did lack a lot of things myself, but I don't know, I would call myself a nerd. I actually loved going to school. Like that was my happy place, right? So that's what I want school to be like for, for children from kindergarten up to high school. I want it to be a place where you feel empowered and that you know, as a child, this is your job. You have to go to school. So let's make it enjoyable. Let's make it an environment where you feel like it's your home too and it's your place. Not to feel like you're prisoners or like you dread to be there. So that's my top priority. Um, to make it a learning environment where children feel like it belongs to them. Thank you, Ms. Lemon. I think we'll go in order this time. Ms. Redmond, then Mr. Martinez, then Ms. Castillo. Okay, good evening. Thank you guys for inviting me and I'm happy to participate in my second um, Youth Council Forum. I am Nikima Redmond. And I'm a current board member at the Patterson Board of Education and I've been on for the last six years. And during my tenure there, I was a member and also vice president for two. And I'm rerunning because I'm interested in pushing this district forward. I was one of the part of the members that got local control back to the city of Patterson, meaning that the residents of Patterson now have a voice at the Board of Education. So to answer your first question, which is what are your top priorities of a school board? Well, being that I'm on the school board, as a board member, we have to um, stay engaged and set, set priorities in progress for student achievement and making sure that we're um, data driven and making sure that the data reflects the student achievement in the district and making sure that our students throughout the district is having a successful time and also to have a working relationship with the superintendent. That's our role as a board member and my top priority. Thanks, Mr. Redmond. Mr. Martinez? There we go. First of all, good evening to everybody and thank you to everybody who uh, organized and is participating in tonight's forum. Uh, my name is Manny Martinez and I've had the good fortune of being an educator in the city of Patterson for about 15 years now. Uh, I started my educational career as a first grade teacher in Patterson Public School number 11. Uh, and then I went on to teach second grade um, at the Community Charter School of Patterson. And uh, I was very fortunate to be a member of the NJCDC family uh, for about 10 years. Um, and five of those years, I actually had the great fortune of being um, an advisor on the Patterson Youth Council. So tonight is very special to me. I, I feel home, um, even though I'm sitting in my own home and we're all in our respective houses. Uh, but this is very familiar. 
uh, very comfortable. And, um, you know, I, I always appreciate this uh, opportunity to engage directly uh, with the young people in the city of Patterson. So uh, for me, this work, um, you know, and to call it work is a stretch. It is very personal. Um, it's what I've dedicated my my uh, the last 15 years of my life to engaging young people in the city of Patterson um, and just trying to uh, play my little part in making um, you know, our young people, our future citizens, our future, well, our current citizens, but our, our future leaders, rather, uh, well-rounded individuals who are going to be contributing to the success of our city and beyond. Um, so very happy to be here tonight. Thank you all for this opportunity. Uh, to answer the first question, my top priority, um, you know, as an educator, my, my main focus is always treating the whole child, taking a holistic approach, um, you know, keeping the child feeling safe. Um, in the early learning environment and making sure that academically they're hitting on the points that they need to be hitting on in order to be successful. But uh, to kind of, you know, whittle it down more specifically to to um, to my priorities, they have to do with uh, facilities and with finance. I think there's a lot of overlap between the two. Um, it's documented and well documented, unfortunately, that Patterson has the most um, outdated facilities in the state of New Jersey. Uh, we have close to 15, if I'm not mistaken, buildings that are well over 100 years old. Um, and we've been fortunate in the last, uh, I'd say, 10 years um, to, you know, to have some new projects, some new schools built in the city of Patterson, International, Hani Awadala, School 16, um, and now the new Taub School or the old Don Bosco. Um, but, you know, we can't be content with that. We have to continue. Um, so my top priorities will be to continue to um, make sure that our facilities and our finances are in alignment so we can continue um, to build and uh, have better learning places and environments for our young people. And cut. Thank you, Mr. Martinez. <laughs> Ms. Castillo. Thank you, guys. Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for the invitation. Um, this is definitely my favorite forum uh, because we it's, it's a different type of forum. It's a different conversation um, to have it with the youth, with the students that we represent, the young adults, um, you know, who are, who are leaders now. You know, you guys are making decisions um, and can drive decisions and decision making, but with what you advocate for um, and what you communicate. So thank you for this opportunity always. Um, you know, I, this is my, I'm seeking reelection for my third term on the school board. Um, I am a mother um, of a beautiful baby boy who would be in Patterson Public Schools very soon. Um, you know, I'm a Patterson resident. I, this is the only place I know and I call home, um, you know, and well, I will be here and raise my family here. Um, but most importantly, I'm a product of the Patterson Public School District. Um, so is my younger brother and most of my family members. So it's, I was encouraged to run um, because I had an organization which started off as a women empowerment organization when I was in college, um, you know, to talk to young ladies about self-esteem and professionalism and how to apply for a job um, and how to build a resume. But that just started expanding. Um, you know, I was already a translator for my younger brother. My parents didn't speak the language. Um, and I started building with that translation um, and really speaking to, to students about exposure um, and what else was out there for them. And I was cultivated and I wanted to, to continue to, to advocate and to do that work. Um, and I ran for the school board. And right now it leads me right into what my top priority still is today. One of them is offering as many opportunities for, for exposure for our students to see um, all the opportunities that they have. Um, and with that, in, in the committee that I chair um, is the restructuring of the high schools. Um, you are all in an academy, um, which some are phenomenal. Some need to be added additional opportunities um, so that you can get a real life experience. So we want to restructure our high school so that A, they offer something that you're interested in. Um, also offering uh, job opportunities that we will have in the future. What is going to be the work environment in the next five, 10, 15 years? We want to prepare you for that. Um, but that also that your teachers are people who are in the industry. So that if you want to be an example, a police officer or a lawyer, that you're getting instruction from a police officer or a lawyer so that you're not only getting theory, but you're getting practice um, in real life conversations and educations as well. So that's going to be my main priority or my first priority uh, when coming back into uh, Patterson Public School as a board member. And it's to really start working with the students. A survey came out, but it's really opening those dialogues with students. What do you want to see? We did phase one, phase two involves all of our students. Um, and what would you like to do moving forward? 
technical opportunities, um, you know, different opportunities that require a college degree, others that require certification and technical licensing, um, college tours, which I know you do through the Youth Council, but really expanding that opportunity for other students as well. Um, so that'll be my main priority. Thank you. I don't want to go past my two minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Castillo. Thank you. Yeah, and I'll give a little forewarning. We might need a little red uh, stop sign and a green stop sign for a few of us because we tend to go over our time. So if uh, somebody wants to go ahead and get that done, we're probably going to need it more than once. <laughs> I know this isn't our first first rodeo and it's a little different on the virtual platform. Uh, just a, just a reminder, ask the Youth Council, please introduce yourself before your question, your name, um, your school and your academy or your track or your shop, like Ms. Castillo mentioned. I know our Youth Council has been fortunate to be involved in some discussions about the restructuring of the high school program. Um, so please introduce yourself. I know, Sophia, you already went, but that uh, Sophia is a student at International High School. Question number two, I think we can start with Mr. Martinez, then Ms. Castillo, then Ms. Redmond, then Ms. Lemon and we will pass it to Joseph. Hello, <clears throat> uh, my name is Joseph and I'm a proud student at the Diana Silobosco STEM Academy at the PTTBS district. Um, I decided to take the biomed career or pathway as many people mentioned. And my question today is on um, first, did, did you attend a public school to the, um, the uh, how how will your experience influence your work as a board member? And are you planning in the future to send your child to a public school, a Patterson public school? Got Thanks, it. Thank you for the question, Joseph. And um, that's a, that's a great path that you've chosen. Um, I think I alluded to it already. Um, yeah, I, I actually was a student in Patterson Public School as I attended Patterson Public School number thirty, Martin Luther King. Um, and I had a great experience. Um, you know, part of that great experience was being able to. Uh, you know, our, our school district tends to be a reflection of our city as a whole. In that, I mean that it's so very diverse, it's so dynamic. Um, you know, my I, I lived across the street from the school that I was able to attend, and um, you know, it was amazing having friends from every background imaginable. Um, we all spoke different languages, which was pretty cool for me because I learned different languages. I got to taste different cuisines growing up, and that was just such an amazing part of my youth growing up in the city of Patterson. Um, so yeah, I was a student in Patterson Public Schools, um, and I was also a teacher in Patterson Public Schools. I taught first grade at public school number 11 on Summer Street, um, and it literally was a baptism by fire. I walked into the classroom the first day, and I was given uh, 35 first graders and a bookshelf where all my books were. And I was told, if you need me, I'm down the hall. And they closed the door behind me. And I said, oh my God, what is going on? But it was the best thing that could have happened to me because it literally was baptism by fire. Um, and, and it was an amazing experience. And um, again, it was personal to me uh, because you know the children that I was teaching, they looked like me. They came from the same neighborhoods that I came from. We spoke the same languages. And that was a big part of the reason why I wanted to become a teacher because in my experience, I never had teachers that looked like me. Um, especially male teachers in uh, elementary education, they didn't exist. Um, so that was a big reason why I wanted to do that. Um, I currently don't have any children, but if when I do, I'm blessed uh, from the Lord above to uh, to become a father. Absolutely. Patterson's my home and they will be attending Patterson Public Schools. Thanks, Thank you, Mr. Joseph. Martinez. Mr. Ms. Castillo, excuse me. So, yes, I actually went to school 18, school 27. Um, and then I went to tech for high school. Sorry, Eastside and Kennedy and international now, but I did go to tech uh, where my pathway was actually criminal justice at the time. Um, and, and I think the experience there um, influenced me tremendously. First, of, first at that time, tech, 80% um, of the students were from Patterson and Passaic. So it was, it was considered in my time a Patterson school almost as well. Um, but it definitely influenced the, influences the work that I do till this day. Um, because I was the op had the opportunity to attend a pathway. I was on co-op. So I used to leave, you know, my junior and senior year at 12 o'clock to go work. And those are things that I wanted to bring to Patterson Public Schools and that I'm currently working on, that we are currently working on uh, when we talk about the restructuring. You know, a lot of that's happened because of the push of us wanting to have pathways that we were ending up with certificates or uh, with uh, college credits. And we had the opportunity to take AP courses. And that's the same thing that I wanted to, the same opportunities I wanted to offer. By the time I left tech, um, I had 18 college credits. 
I had already finished a semester. Um, and I wanted to, I want to offer that opportunity. Uh, we're also working on job placement opportunities as we restructure for those students that have to work, that want to work, um, you know, so that we can offer them that opportunity to get that real life experience um, in the pathway or in the academy that they are currently studying in. So, you know, it, it shapes me until this way, you know, until now, until the decisions that I'm making and the things that I'm pushing on the board. A lot of it is thankfully the opportunities and the experiences that I had um, transitioning from school 27 to Pasay County Tech um, and being able to bring those things back. Um, for my children, yes, my child is already in preschool. Now preschool is zero to five. So my child is in preschool. This is the only place I've known as home. My husband is a born and raised in the city of Patterson. And, you know, this is where we want to live and, and grow our family. So my son has already um, started his uh, Patterson public school career. Um, and he has, a, we have a long way to go, but yes, absolutely. Um, this, this, is, this is home. Thank you. Um, next, we'll ask Ms. Redmond. Okay. Yes, I attended Patterson Public Schools. I was a graduate of Pat, um, public school number 27, and I also attended Patterson Catholic High School. So I have both Patterson Public Schools and parochial experience. So my experience that influenced me as a board member is that I'm, I was always engaged with the civic duties of the city. So I was on the, the student council. I was a student council president in Patterson Catholic and also at School 27. So my board experience and helped me, helped me to move the district forward and makes me become more interested. So as a student, I hope that you guys will become more engaged on what the city is doing and also what we're doing at Patterson Public Schools. Um, if I have children, because I don't have children right now, they will attend Patterson Public Schools, but I also have family members that currently are in Patterson Public Schools. Um, again, I just wanted to say that my experiences is from the city is just being involved, making sure that I was always had a mentor that made me be involved. One of my mentors was one of the former council women, uh, Vera Ames, and she made sure I understood how government worked and how it was important to be involved in my city. Um, thank you. And then Ms. Lemon. Yeah, so that's a great question because I believe it's important for school board commissioners to not only grow up in the Patterson school system so that they can have their own experiences. So for me, I went to school 17 and school 12. I actually live around a corner from school 12 still. So I'm still in the same neighborhood that I grew up in. And I graduated from what was then the Montclair State Pre-Collegiate Teaching Academy. So when we talk about restructuring the high schools, that happened, you know, a couple years ago. I believe I was the first one the second class of students to go into the academies. I graduated high school in 2006. But from my experience, the high school, it was great. It was small. The classroom sizes was great. I actually had some really good teachers. But the partnership that Patterson had with Montclair somehow, you know, fell through. Um, so we didn't, you know, leave that academy with any, you know, certifications and things like that. So it's, I'm glad to know that now the restructuring process is happening. And as a future school board member, I would like to make sure that the partnerships do not fall through because, you know, I started a high school thinking it was one program and left, you know, just getting a regular high school experience. And then also my elementary schools, my first school, school 17 is actually not in use either. So I kind of feel like two of my schools that I graduated from kind of no longer exist. And that's what I don't want to happen here in the city of Patterson. But I do, what I would say that even though in elementary school at school 12, I didn't have any of those extracurricular activities. But again, that goes back with the teachers that I had. I know that they worked hard and they tried their best to give us the best school experience because I grew up here in Patterson. I still live here in Patterson, but I consider myself successful. And that's what I what again, I want to bring back to our students for us, you know, to believe and know that, yes, we're here in Patterson and we can be effective, you know, with the resources that we're given. And as a school board commissioner, it is my responsibility and I would try my best to even improve on that. And then I do not have my own children yet. I'm not a mother, but I have siblings and I have nieces and nephews and cousins 
who I help again as a tutor. I visit some of the schools on back to school nights. So about two, three, no, not two years ago, maybe three, four years ago now, I did go to school 12 where I graduated eighth grade. And I just, in the school, I see that nothing has changed from when I was there. And I believe that was the issue. Um, the district should make sure that we're not only building new schools that but as we can and as, as funds are available, that we're upgrading the schools that are still there before we have to shut them down when they start crumbling up to no use. So as a school board commissioner, my own life experiences, you know, with the shortcomings of our district and also with the successes, I can use my own experiences to be an effective school board member. Thank you. Thank you for all of your responses. And now we'll move on to Abraham for the next question. Hello, can I be heard? Hello. All right, thank you. Uh, let me just turn on my camera really quickly. All right, hello everybody. My name is Abraham Barroso. Um, I attend, my the high school that I go to is Passaic County Technical Institute where I am in the information technology and network security shop. And my question is, what are your thoughts on charter schools? Okay, sorry. Um, so we'll start with um, Miss Redmond. Okay. Um, I believe that charter schools are a great opportunity for parents to have a choice and where their child have, have become educated in, in the city of Patterson. At the end of the day, I think that all the students belong to us because they're part of the community, so we have to educate them. Um, one of my colleagues mentioned that our infrastructure is old. So with the partnerships with charter schools, it helps us to alleviate some of the overcrowding in some of our schools. So I believe it's a great opportunity for our parents to, to choose the option, because again, I'm a product of parochial schools, so my parents had a choice. So that's, that's my opinion on charter schools. Thank you. Um, then we'll go to Mr. Martinez. Thank you. Uh, yeah, no, this, this question um, always seems to find me because uh, I have become known as the, the charter candidate because I've spent uh, a majority of my career working in charter schools. Um, and as uh, Nikima mentioned, to me, uh, charter schools, simple and plain, they represent choice. Um, you know, although I represent the Patterson Public School Districts, I also do represent charter schools um, in this city as well. Um, and I do not believe that it is my place or the place of any other adult, for that matter, to tell a parent where they should put their child. Um, you know, if a parent feels that the best opportunity for their child is in a charter school, then God bless, go ahead and do it. And actually it takes, you know, it, to me, it shows the parents, you know, being a little bit more assertive in their, um, you know, in, in, in their child's education because they're taking the opportunity, they're taking the time to apply and seek out a better situation or what they may deem to see uh, to be better for their child. So I applaud parents for, for taking that opportunity to seek something better for their child. Um, I've also I've had instances of parents who, uh, you know, had their children in charter schools and then returned their child back to uh, traditional public schools. Um, it's really just a matter of fit. Um, and, and it should also be noted that charter schools are public schools. Charter schools are not private schools. There's no tuition. They're not parochial schools. They are technically public schools. And we are educating Patterson children at the end of the day. So, um, yeah, no, uh, I think charter schools, you know, are, are have a cemented place in the city of Patterson. Um, they're not going anywhere. Um, and I think there's a lot of opportunity for traditional public schools and charter schools to share resources um, and to share, uh, you know, in the areas of professional development. I think there's a lot of opportunity for, for growth and sharing of resources between charters and traditional public. So, um, yeah, go charters. Thank you. Um, and mm. then Ms. Castillo. So basically ditto to everything that Manny said, uh, but no, so I, I, I agree, you know, the most important and, and I guess the confusion sometimes um, that, that many individuals have um, is the, sep and the separation or the difference between charter and public schools, but charter schools are public schools. Um, and I think that's very important to mention and educate the community on. And I agree, this is about choice. Wherever you think that your child will succeed, wherever you think your child will do best, and it could be for many reasons, um, smaller classrooms or just uh, closer to home, whatever there may be the reason. Um, I think parents 
and students have that opportunity to make that decision. Um, it's great to partner with our charter schools. And I think that's very important. It's about working together. Um, they're all Patterson children and it's partnering in order, uh, you know, when we talk about fiscal finances, uh, finances, but fiscal responsibility, like Manny said, you know, what can we do to work together? Professional development, um, you know, transportation. There are things that may be working great at a charter school that a public school can implement or vice versa. Um, so I think it's about true partnership and working together for all Patterson students. Uh, so thank you. Okay, thank you. And then um, Ms. Lemon. Okay, so I know that's a, a, a big question that always comes up, mainly because a part of the Patterson Public Schools funding or the monies that they get for the Patterson School District, the district then has to give some of that money to the charter schools. So as people who pay taxes, and um, when we talk about how the public schools do not have enough funding coming in for the services that becomes an issue and that's why most people are against charter schools so where i stand on the funding part of that is i do wish and hope that on a federal or state level a solution could be made where separate monies can go to the charter schools and not have to come directly from the patterson school district from my experience um there's some charter schools that I absolutely love and I adore their, their teachers and I have personally worked with them to help students. Um, when we think, when we talk about education and, and I try my best to be realistic and to, um, to you know, talk on a level and we're talking to, to students and young people right now. So what I'm trying to say is when it comes to education, no matter if it's a public school or a charter school, it mostly at the end of the day boils down to that one teacher. And how I just mentioned, even um, a teacher can have the top quality resources or a teacher can have the bare minimum uh, resources, but it comes down to that, that classroom experience and how that child is doing in that classroom. So when it comes to parents, I do believe that they should have the choice to determine if they want their child to go to public school, charter school, religion school, home schools. It's up to that parent and that family to decide that best educational route for their children. So I believe all options should be available. The only thing I would say is that the funding I do as a Patterson School Board Commissioner, I would, you know, want all the funding to stay with the Patterson Public School System because as my role would be to provide the best education. So I hope on a state level, um, fundings for charter schools can be given directly to them. But again, I support charter schools and I support any institution or program that has a passion and truly works to better children. Thank you. Thank you um, for all of you guys' responses. And now we'll move on to Ramisha for her question. Hi, my name is Ramisha. I attend the Diana Sila Bosco STEM Academy as a member of the- Ramisha, can you speak up a little bit, please? Can you guys hear me now? Try, oh try your loudest voice. This is my loudest voice. <laughs> we'll all lean into our screens. Go ahead. We can hear you. Don't worry. Sometimes my speaker doesn't work. Okay, I'm going to, this is going to be an uncomfortable angle, but you know, this is a new relationship we're forming here. So I'll start again. My name is Ramisha and I'm a part of the Diana C. Labosco STEM Academy as a member of the Biomedical Life Sciences Pathway. So my question is, what will you do specifically to encourage more youth civic engagement in Patterson? Um, and then for this question, we'll go in the order of Ms. Castillo and then Ms. Slemon, Mr. Martinez, and then Ms. Redmond. Ramisha, you're right. This is a great new relationship we just formed. I agree. Um, and it was great. No, it was great. We could hear you. So thank you for that. Um, the, one of the things that I would encourage, you know, our, our students or our young adults to do is really participate. So it would be in, in a multi-level, at least from my vision. Um, you know, youth councils and opportunities like this are very important where students are engaged, right? Where you really are knowing the information um, or researching the information and are really able to take, have educated conversations about what's going on in our city and in our state 
and that is phenomenal. It's how do we take this and expand it to give opportunities to other students as well? Um, you know, how do we research information? Um, how do we really be, are able to communicate that? Um, and it's providing that exposure, right? You guys are already doing that. You're very talented students and is being able to bring you into a, a, a place where you can expose all that you know. Um, and you're able to really stand in front of individuals and really start talking about some real changes. Um, and that happens with organizations like this. This happens when um, we restructure the schools um, and you really can have in-depth conversation about a career choice um, and really involve those real life experiences. Um, because when you're in high school and you're learning real life experiences, it's easier for you to start having conversations you know, in, in a real level to prepare you to what the next step of your life is. And I think that's very important. Um, and, and just being engaged, right? There's Many people think that students or young adults don't know what's going on. And that is so far from the truth. Um, the issue is sometimes you're not giving the platform to really have these conversations. Uh, you know, I, I ran for the school board and won at 23 years old, youngest elected official, but in, in the city of Patterson. But that is because, you know, I had the opportunity to have individuals to give me that platform to communicate what I wanted to say. And these uh, these organizations kind of elevate you to that. And it's our job on the school district, on the charter school as a city to really provide that platform and engage. Just are you involved in restructuring of the high schools? Okay, let's have deeper conversations of what do you want to see in the school? What do you want to see in the city? This is the city that you live in. Um, and you get to have the choices on what you want to see next. Um, and it's providing that platform, which is very important. So, um, you know, it's, it's what I, I, I want to continue doing and it's a, what I want to expand on. Um, and hopefully we will be able to do that together, um, you know, in, in the different high schools and copy a model, sorry, Bob, but copy a model that's really working um, and give other students that opportunity. So, uh, you know, you guys are already halfway there. It's now our job to give you that platform to communicate it. So thank you. Was I next? Why not? Yeah. So, <laughs> so what would I, let me just reread re -read the question again. What would I do specifically to encourage more youth civic engagement? So exactly, there's organizations and youth councils like yourselves. And I know the Black Lives Matter has a youth council as well. So that's one doing the research of what programs are out there that's encouraging children to use their voice. I'm a part of the Patterson Civic Trust. And right now we're in the works of talking about reaching out. And I don't know if it's uh, David, Mr. Gilman, you that I should reach out to because they're looking for junior trustees. And the Patterson Civic Trust you literally talks about policies and, and what does it, what does the school board commissioner do? What do our city council people do? So it's a program that teaches about government. So that's an avenue that I would like to introduce to you all. And one, it's being, you know, being relatable. One being myself and meeting children where they are. I try my best to be a person in the community, active with children. So it's, you know, being accessible to you guys. And just so you know, whether elected or not, I mean, the goal, of course, is for me to be elected and to have the role. But um, I can leave my info in the chat here. And if you, you know, want to get involved and do some of the community work that I do, and I'm pretty sure you guys are extremely intelligent. I feel I'm feeling the vibes coming off my screen right here. I'm pretty sure I can learn from you. So we can start a relationship today so that we can continue to be engaged. You know, it just doesn't stop here at this meeting. Thank you. I believe I'm up next. Um, yeah, so no, th th this is actually a really great question. And, uh, you know, the obvious answer is, you know, to continue to grow programs like Patterson Youth Council. Um, you know, this was, uh, you know, the, the birth, uh, the brainchild, uh, you know, of uh, someone who had a vision of saying, you know, our young people should have a seat at the table. They should have skin in the game, um, you know, and making the decisions that directly affect them, you know, not only on the school level, but on the city level. Um, so, you know, I, I think, you know, this is the, the top tier of what we need to continue to replicate throughout the city. Um, you know, me personally, I think, you know, um, having been an educator in Patterson for over, for up to 15 years now, I believe I'm on my 15th year, um, I, I have an advantage of having, um, you know, had the opportunity of literally seeing hundreds of students grow up right before my very eyes. 
Um, you know, literally kids who I had when I started my career in first and second grade, they're now, you know, college students and, and beyond. Um, and it's so rewarding. And one of the things that I've continued to do with all of these, with as many of the young people as I can, is mentor them. Um, you know, just, you know, weekly check-ins. Um, you know, summertime, you know, when they're they're not engaged in, you know, in traditional learning in the summertime, I get to spend a lot of time with them. Um, you know, but being a mentor to a good number of students is something that, you know, I've done and will continue to do. And I think that's the best way to continue to cultivate those relationships. I think it's important for our young people in the city to see reflections of themselves in society. This way they know what they can become. Um, you know, if they see someone, um, you know, a, a professional in whatever field, then they grow up knowing, OK, well, I can do that, too, because, you know, that person looks like me. They come from where I come from. So if he's a doctor or a teacher or whatever, I can also do that. Um, so it's very powerful and important that we continue to mentor and, uh, you know, and, and help, you know, grow the, the whole child. And, um, you know, again, I, I believe very much in, you know, uh, taking it to to where the young people are. You know, one of the downfalls as adults sometimes we tend to have is that we expect young people to come and, and seek us out. It, it needs to be the other way around. As adults, we need to seek them out, seek you all out and engage you. Um, so, again, you know, um, I, I can ramble on for a long time. But, um, you know, bottom line is that, you know, my continued mentorship is, I think, my uh, my most effective uh, trait when it comes to youth engagement. So I'm just going to jump in. I will lead by example. At the, di at the district, we're currently working on a policy as creating a junior board member so they can shadow what we do and be a part of the um, educational process and see what my current commissioner goes through. Um, also, we're creating a justice program where students in the school district have a voice and can voice their opinions and stuff that, they, that they're currently going through. But I can also give you an example. When students was not happy about what things were going on, they made their voice quite clear. They came to a couple of our board meetings. I think these were students from Eastside High School. And they made sure that we understood what the issues were and how can they be involved. And this is why we created the policy about the junior board membership because they wanted to be involved in the process of the policies that we create for them. So um, I would just like to sit there and have an open discussion with some of the, the youth and it was some of our students to find out what piques their interest in civic uh, engagement and making sure that they'd be a part of the community because sometimes often adults think that you're not interested. We find the opposite. A lot of you reach right out to us to find out what we actually do. I think I was asked to make sure I was mirrored one time where a student actually remembered followed me and followed the process of being a vice president of the school board and did a documentary for a school project. So I would just say, make sure that we're accessible to you and make sure that we keep an open, honest communication with you. Thank you guys um, for all of your responses. Um, now we'll go to Liza D uh, for the next question. Hi, my name is Lisevi Diaz and I go to BCTI and I'm a senior. Can you just speak up a little bit, please? Sure. Hi, my name is Lisevi Diaz and I'm a senior at BCTI I'm in engineering. And the question is, what makes you stand out among the other candidates? And what are special attributes, talents, and, ability, and abilities will you bring to your district? Um, and for this question, we'll go in the order of Mr. Martinez, Ms. Redmond, and uh, Ms. Lemon, and then Ms. Castillo. And I'll also put it in the chat, just in case. Got it. Thank you for the question. Um, I think what makes me uniquely qualified for this position um, is, you know, my experience not only as a student in Patterson Public Schools, as a teacher in Patterson Public Schools, um, but also as an administrator um, in schools here in Patterson, and having had nine years of experience already on the board. Goodness gracious, nine years. I've been here for a long time. Um, so I, I think when you when you um, you know put all of those things together, um, it makes me very uniquely qualified. I have firsthand experience um, on and on every level, you know, from the student to the teacher to the admin and now to the board member. Um, so it's allowed me to see things uh, see things through uh, you know through all the various lenses. So I can put myself in the place of a child. Um, you know, sitting in the classroom in Patterson Public Schools, I can put myself in the place of a teacher who teaches in Patterson Public Schools. I can put myself in the place of an administrator, and then you know, I, I, I remain fortunate in the place of a, of a board member. So I think all of those things, um, 
you know, you put them together and they make me uniquely qualified. Um, and again, also, you know, I think what's really been the most successful, the most, um, you know, uh, I guess the secret ingredient to my success as an educator is just, you know, the ability to relate to the young people that I work with every single day, because, um, you know, I might have said this already, but, you know, they those faces are, you know, they look like my face. You know, they come from the same neighborhoods that I come from. Um, there's a certain relatability that we have uh, when I look at them and when they look at me. And I think, you know, having that that rapport with my students has really been helpful and with the families for that matter as well, too. So um, I think all of those things are really what uh, have made me successful in my career as an educator. Thank you. So what makes me stand out as a candidate? I have a solid interpersonal skills, which means open communication, trustworthiness, honesty, confidence, and consistency. I've been a board member for six years. And I, when I come to sit at the table, I must be prepared. So you have to make sure that you read the material that is presented to you and making sure that we are open with the process and making sure that we are focused to serve the children of the city of Patterson because the role is to serve you. And if we're not willing to do that, then it's no need for us to be a commissioner on a school board. Um, at the end of the day, we have to have a healthy relationship and making sure that we're being honest to the public and making sure that we're honest with parents and students. So at the end of the day, that's what I stand out. It's true honesty, availability, and not afraid to answer the hard questions, truthfully. So I believe I've pretty much kind of been living my life for this role. As I mentioned, you know, kind of my life model or even the model for my business is bridging the gap between school and home. I just always found myself, you know, either working with children or trying to help out parents. I just feel like, you know, I'm, I'm going on passion and purpose. You know, I literally just feel like, you know, God has given, just given me natural ability to be, you know, to be relatable, to not only work with preschoolers, but then also, you know, go to our seniors, our grandparents, because there's a lot of grandparents who, you know, work hard and still are raising their children. So you have to be someone who can listen to, you know, everyone into our community. I love different cultures. I love people. You know, I always try my best to be, to learn, you know, every day, even as adults, we learn every day. And even like I just mentioned learning, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of things that I can learn from you guys. So just being a person who has won um, the passion of serving, because as an elected official, yay, you got this job and kudos to you, but you have a job to serve people. So you have to always make sure you have a heart of service, one. And then when it comes to doing research and, you know, making sure that we're reading up on policies and coming to meetings prepared and not just listening to, you know, what other people have to say or some other body, some other person's ideas. You have to make sure that you're able to articulate and, and come up with your own answers. So I believe those are skills. One, being relatable, being realistic, being someone who lives, works, and grew up in this community and someone who is constantly taking the, the opportunity every day to learn. Thank you. Um, how do I stand out? That, that's a loaded question. Uh, but mostly because I was crazy enough at 22, 23 years old um, to run for office, um, all because I wanted to make a change in my community. Um, I have a, a younger brother who's 10 years younger than me. He just graduated from Rosa Parks High School last year. Um, and, and I just wanted to, to create change. You know, I was an ESL student who came to the United States without speaking any English. Um, and I just wanted to, you know, just with the dream of my parents that, you know, for them, the American dreams were for me to be successful. It wasn't money. Um, it wasn't a big house. It was just for me to get a good education. Um, and they guilt tripped me into that. And, uh, you know, I, I wanted to pursue that. I wanted to make them proud, but I also started seeing the changes and, and the opportunities that other students had in other areas. Um, and, and that's because I did, I graduated, I went off to college, I came back and I saw those opportunities and I wanted the students, I wanted my brother at the time, my family members and all the other students in the city to have those opportunities. So I decided to run for school board and go figure I won. Um, you know, and, and, and I think it's, it's that um, determination 
um, and that eagerness to want to make change, to see a difference, you know, to see myself and many of our students, um, to see my brother and now to have my son who will be in Patterson Public Schools. And it's wanting to create that change for all of you um, because you're all so talented, um, you know, and, and you deserve the very best. Um, and, and the attributes, you know, it's what I do. I work in service. Um, I've worked as a health and human services director. I'm at the State County Board of Social Services. So it, it's literally what I do for a living. Um, and it's my passion. It's what I love to do. But at the same time, I can make real life decisions. Uh, being a health director during the pandemic, meaning you're making uh, difficult decisions and on the go decisions, but as well as, you know, getting an education as well to, you know, I'm finalizing my MBA, my, biz, my master's in business administration, where I can have those educated conversations about our budget and how to make sure that those monies go back into the classroom, go back to all of you so that you, you know, so that you can get the best resources. And it's really comparing up, you know, a background in education and really getting that with, um, you know, just the type of personality, the eagerness and the determination to create change. Um, and, and, and being able to communicate that to the community and getting that feedback and bringing it back. So um, that's just, you know, kind of what makes me stand out a little bit. So thank you. Thank you for all of the responses. Um, so our next question will come from Shayla. Um, hi, my name's Shayla Verastegui. Um, I'm a senior at Gar Morgan Academy. Um, and my question is, what is one lesson that you have learned about yourself and leadership through living through the COVID-19 pandemic? Thank you. Okay, and for the order for this question would be Ms. Lemon, Ms. Castillo, Ms. Redmond, and then Mr. Martinez. And I'll also put that in the chat again. So I absolutely love this question because my experience during the pandemic is what pushed me to even do this. So last year I ran, um, as everyone say, no one knew who I was um, because I, I, it was pandemic. I was doing my, my business virtual. As I mentioned, I tutor here in Patterson, but also Bergen County. Thanks to the pandemic, my business opened up to Virginia and Florida, and possibly I can tutor um, some girls in Africa in the coming in the coming months, which sounds amazing. So pandemic opened up my business, and pandemic pushed me to do this because as I was trying my best, I did free lessons during the whole pandemic. I did free math virtually. Um, of course, I guess I should have did better with marketing and had you know anybody else who never heard of it. But I did do these things. I offered free uh, programs. It pretty much opened me up. It opened up my business more and it made me um, jump out and say, what else can I do? And it pushed me to run for school board because even now we're a week away from my second campaign and every day my mind is blown that I'm running a campaign and <laughs> I could potentially become an elected official. So this pandemic just taught me just, just do it. And for all of us, just go for it. You know, I'm pretty sure we all went through some heartbreak during pandemic. I'm pretty sure we all lost someone or know someone who, who has lost someone. So I would say it, I hope that as it did for me, that it encouraged us to seize the moment and to not live into fear and to step out of our comfort zones and say, hey world, you know, I'm here, I'm Shaniqua Lemon. So that's what the pandemic did for me. Um, I the pandemic definitely taught me a lot, um, but I think that's one lesson that's taught all of us collectively is that we're all stronger than we thought we were. Um, you know, we've lost into family members, you know, we've had very difficult times, uh, whether it's in your education and in your personal life. Um, so we, we, we've all, we, we're all definitely stronger. Um, and I think that learning that through this time and coming out of it on the other side um, and, and all the things that we've learned about ourselves, because we were really stuck at home for a long time. Um, well, I wasn't, I had worked the entire time, but, uh, you know, really learning about how to deal with frustration, how to deal with um, loss, how to deal with, you know, sometimes being home in four walls and not being able to go out and, and really dealing with fear of the unknown. Um, and that just made us all so much stronger. And I think 
kudos especially to our students because I was in school too getting my master's so I, I get it a little bit how difficult it is to really learn virtually um, and the time that it takes and the attention that you put, have to put to it. Um, for me at least I was one of those students where I struggled with virtual learning. Uh, many students did, many students were extremely successful during this time. Um, and, and for leadership, um, leadership has definitely been difficult during this time because of the unknown and still serving. Um, you know, we were having two meetings a week, every week during the entire pandemic because we needed to make sure that the students had the resources um, to continue to learn while they were home and how to progressively learn. Because let's be honest, we weren't ready for a pandemic um, in the city of Patterson and worldwide. And we went from paper to making sure every, every student had a device to asynchronous learning, to some um, teachers being able to do um, synchronized learning, to then being able to bring students, uh, for students to apply to high school, for students to apply to college, and really start adding those additional resources as time went on. Um, so we had to do all of that work to making sure that you got the best, but also that we were ready to have all the students and teachers and families um, have the faith to bring you back into the building, you know, so that you can see your friends and, and being able to have those resources in place so that school buildings would be secure for you in a, a place where you can learn um, after 18 and a half months and helping you all readjust. So I, I have to say, you know, it, leadership was difficult, um, but, but it was worth it. And I think that's the important part that we all sat there meeting after meeting because the students were our priority. You know, Patterson students were first in our eyes. Um, so, you know, as we progress and as we move forward, I expect all of this to get easier for all of us. But one thing I did learn is that, you know, it, you, we are all stronger than we think that we are, than we are. Um, there is so much potential and Patterson students have successfully gone through 18 months of the difficult times that anyone will experience in the probably next 100 years. Um, and you all have made it on the other side. You have all succeeded at it. And from there, you can only push forward and things will get better. So um, so I, I think we learned that collectively. And if you didn't, I just want to make sure that you all know that how proud we are. Um, and not just as an elected official, but as Pattersonians, how proud we are of our students today uh, more than ever. So thank you. So to jump in, um, it taught me to be more patient and understanding. Like my colleague said, we met, I think a total of maybe 40 times and maybe three times a week throughout the whole pandemic. And we had to learn to adjust to things that were thrown at us. We, were, we was one of the first districts to come up with a plan of action to close for the pandemic because originally we was only supposed to close for two weeks. Two weeks ended up being 18 months. So it taught us about durability and being able to change within those 18 months. Um, then we also met as we were losing family members and we had to take mental breaks as board members. People don't talk about that. Um, we had to regroup ourselves, call each other. We became more like family members because we dealt with each other every day. And we continued to push each other and made sure that we heard the, the challenges of our students. Um, we wanted to make sure that family members was losing jobs that we were able to be a part of the community to make sure that they got food served to them three or four times a week. So throughout this pandemic, it taught us to be um, open, honest, and to just don't take life so seriously. We were so busy being into our routines that um, we didn't really enjoy life. Sometimes I was just happy just to get out and just take the breath for fresh air and make sure that I, I was able to just breathe. So as students, we asked you to do that. And we also came up with mental breaks and mental and social emotional programs for you throughout the school. So we was able to get a program where you guys can feel like if you have any questions or any concerns that you can talk to people in school, because we know that you also went through loss and tragedy and you were also trying to maintain being a student. So my thing is, as a student, please don't be afraid to reach out. If, you, if something is not okay, be able to say it's not okay. And we have those support systems in our school district so you can get that. So don't, not, don't be afraid to reach out. That's one of my things I would say that it, it, it helped me during this, can't, this co, um, pandemic. And I, I will have to say that 
it taught me to be more compassionate because again, I think I was just so busy going through the motions of trying just to be a board member. So now you get to be compassionate because you have actual children and bodies that you're actually holding your hands. I believe I'm up. Um, yeah, I, I think the greatest lessons that I learned during this pandemic and how it, uh, you know, filtered into my to my leadership um, is that, you know, both time and life are very short and very fleeting. Um, you know, perhaps some of the things that we may have taken for granted before uh, the pandemic hit, um, we certainly didn't take them for granted anymore. Um, and, and perhaps, you know, uh, you know, going beyond that, it, it really humbled me um, in so many ways. Um, you know, having experienced, you know, uh, tremendous loss, um, you know, per personally and just, you know, in the community, having experienced so much, it just really humbled me as an individual. It just reminded me so much more that, you know, at the end of the day, as it pertains to this work that we do as board members and this, it pertains to the work that I do um, in education and so on, we're, we're simply put, we are servants to the people. Um, that is the only reason that we do what we do. At the end of the day, that's really what matters to be able to help um, you know, the, the, the residents in this city in any way, shape or form that we're able to, um, you know, and uh, it, it really says a lot about a person's character, um, you know, how they respond and react when uh, life throws, you know, difficult situations at them. Um, and, you know, for as much pain and, and, and hurt that a lot of people went through, I, I was filled with a great sense of hope, um, strangely enough, because I saw so much good come out of people um, during these tough times. Um, and that really did, you know, um, you know, pluck at my heartstrings um, because it, it just kind of renewed me a sense of hope that there are good people out there doing good things, um, you know, and in the face of all the, the craziness that we've been around in the last year, um, you know, just remain humble and always remember that at the end of the day, we are simply put servants to our community. Thank you. Um, for the next question, we'll go to Asil. Hi everyone, can you hear me? Okay, hi, my name is Asil. I'm a student at Passaic County Technical Institute in the engineering shop. Um, the question is, recently there has been a lot of press regarding poor food services at the schools. What can the board do to fix this, this issue? And I just wanted to mention, Miss Lemon, I love your earrings, they're so cute. Okay, for this question, we're going to go in the order of Ms. Redmond, Mr. Martinez, Ms. Lemon, and Ms. Castillo. First, I must say I was outraged and disappointed by some of the images that we saw on social media. But as a current board member, we um, spoke with the superintendent. We came up with the cor corrective action plan, which some of our students have gotten surveys from high schools to um, our babies in kindergarten to get a better selection of food to see what you guys will like. Um, also training was implemented since some of our staff members. Um, we're just hoping that this is this will not happen again. Um, we're, we're making sure that it doesn't happen again. But um, at, at this point, we just did a corrective action plan and we're just holding the superintendent accountable and we're making sure that this has never happened to our students again. So first and foremost, you know, it, it's completely unacceptable for, for food like that to be served to anybody in the city of Patterson, students especially. Um, you know, uh, I would have hoped that the person who was serving that meal would have used their better judgment and said, wow, this is not cooked, this is overcooked, this is burnt, let me serve them one that's uh, cooked properly. Um, that didn't happen. And for that, you know, we take ownership, I take ownership um, of that as a district, you know, we, we needed to fix that. And that's exactly what we've done. We've tasked our superintendent um, and held her accountable um, to ensure that this no longer happens. And she's put together the corrective action plan. Um, and it seems strange to say that, we, you know, we're going to retrain folks, um, you know, on how to do their job better. But in this instance, that's exactly what was needed. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, the notion of uh, a person using their better judgment in that instance, you you'd think that that would have been, you know, uh, what took place, but it didn't. Um, so when that, something like that occurs, um, you know, you do everything that you need to do to ensure that it doesn't happen again through training, through the corrective action plan and through uh, from our position as board members, tasking our superintendent to make sure that this never happens again. Um, it's not acceptable and uh, we don't accept it at all moving forward. Uh, 
Okay, so to answer this question, um, the word that popped out to me was recently, because it's it's only because a student, I don't know the process of how it happened, but only because a student either shared it with their parents or posted it themselves, that it became a, a issue for the press. So we all know that it has been an issue for years. I mean, we all been through the public school system. We know that the food, you know, we could say never was, you know, quite appetizing, but I enjoyed some of the meals when I was there. But for what we saw, um, for it to become a recent issue is not a recent issue. Um, as school board missioners, the, the incumbents, the ones who are already on the school board, you know, you do have jobs, you do have busy lives, but I feel that if there was already connection with the students, already connection um, with what's truly going on inside the buildings, then we would know that this was already happening and not have to wait for social media to blow it up. You should have already been on top of it. Um, I did have a meeting with the superintendent, the assistant superintendent and their business administrator. And one of my questions to her, you know, was to hear directly from her what the action plan was. And I had some questions, whereas are the staff members cooking the meals themselves? And from her response to me was that majority of the kitchens are warming stations, which means they're not the ones cooking this food from scratch, that this food is being brought to them and pretty much they're somewhat warming it up. So from I'm getting discrepancies from what she's saying and I just wanna know exactly how the kitchens are run. If the staff are completely at fault and they're the ones that's you know producing all of this I don't even want to call some of that food because I wouldn't even want to eat it. And it's sad to say that, you know, we're known in a society, you know, here in America, not even the Patterson issue that some of our, you know, prisoners or people that are behind bars are treated better than students are in the schools. And that's really sad. And as a society, we really need to change that. Not saying that people in prison deserve to eat, you know, less quality food either, but our students definitely deserve higher quality. And so I would say it shouldn't, it's not just a recent issue, it's something that should have never happened. And as a school board member, you know, I'm not saying I'm gonna be in the schools every single day because just like our current school board members, I have a full-time job, I'm running a business, but I will make it my priority to make sure I know what school is like on a day-to-day -day basis with our students. And I wouldn't have to wait for social media to make it an issue or for me to wanna to take action on something. Thank you. Okay, um, so I'm gonna go back just a little bit um, and then we'll, we'll, I'll kind of transition into um, the answer. So there are two different conversations um, and just because I'm reading the chat as well, um, it's the preparation versus the type of meal served. So uh, the first part is, you know, the, the preparation, which is what we've seen um, on a recent pictures is the, the preparation um, and what students have been served, what that visual is, right? Um, that's what we've seen in a lot of the pictures, you know, where it's burnt food or whatever that may be. That's that preparation portion. When we talk about the variety of food or what types of food we're, serve, we're serving, um, I think that's a conversation in itself. So four years ago, five years ago, uh, a similar conversation came about and not necessarily because there was any issue, but because we wanted to talk about um, expanding our meals um, and the different types of meals. Um, this is before we started, this is right when we started our breakfast program and our uh, dinner pilot program at some of our schools, uh, which at that point we were going into the right track. However, um, the portion that we, we need to continue to discuss is A, you know, the, the visual or the types of food, it's unacceptable, right? You can't give a student burnt food. Um, you can't give a student um, food that is half cooked that is missing ingredients or options like cheese or whatever it may be. You can't give students um, half of a meal. So you can't only give them you know, a, a meat and maybe the beans and not the fruits and vegetables and all the other options that they can have as well. That's absolutely unacceptable um, and something that our students need for nutrition, but also that you deserve, um, you know, as all students deserve. The second part, uh, which we've done that because as board members, our only employee is the superintendent. Right? We're not allowed to discipline individual employees. So that's why you hear a lot of board members say we went to the superintendent because the superintendent is the chief executive, the CEO basically of the school district. From then, uh, she handles all of the operations. So all other staff 
is under her responsibility. So we go to our executive, uh, which is the superintendent. We talk about the issue. She does a corrective action plan. And then that progresses through her employees, um, just so that we get that. So that is where we said there's a corrective action created. Training was given to um, individuals who work in the district, um, just to make sure that they have the proper training, that the discipline was provided for individuals who um, may not have been doing the right thing. When we talk about the types of food, um, this is where we talked about a survey um, to see what students would like to eat um, and what options are given to them across the board. So there are some places, and to be quite honest, and it's not correct, and this is where the board comes in, there are some places that are doing a great job. Um, there are some places that they're not so great. It's how do we create a standard across the board? Um, also, the difference between school lunches and sometimes our home cooked meals. Um, for many of us, you know, the, the, the flavor is a little bit different um, when we talk about low sodium, low salts, um, and calories of that, and, and a healthy, balanced meal. Um, but how do we make that appetizing for students as well? Because just because it's healthy doesn't mean it has to taste poorly. Um, so, and this is why, this is where we bring in the students on board through the service, through various conversations on what is it that you want to do? This is all, also, what do you want to see? What do you want to eat? This is also where local control comes in, right? Now the board is really able to direct the superintendent. Before January of 2021, under state control, meaning we could advise the superintendent what we wanted, doesn't mean the superintendent had to comply. Um, now, as we move into local control and the superintendent is actually the board's employee and your employee, you know, as, as the community, we can now give her directives. Um, this is what we want to see in Patterson. This is what we want to change. This is what our students want to eat. This is what they want to see. Um, and it's now really talking about that partnership about what our students want, uh, you know, being really pushed by the board and the superintendent really complying. And that's something that, um, is happening for the first time in 30 years. We have been under local control for a whole 10 months. Um, so, you know, this is now where we can, 10, 11 months, where we can really create change with your input. Um, and I think that's extremely important as well. Um, really talking about change um, and how we can move forward uh, with a true partnership with the students. So thank you. Thank you for all of the responses. Um, our next question is going to come from Eduardo. Hello there. I am a freshman at DCL STEM Academy uh, in the engineering pathway. Um, the the, the question is, what do you think is the greatest challenge that our city faces? And what do you think that you could do about it as a board member? For this question- Just for a little, oh, sorry to interrupt. Just a little clarity. When you say the city, are you talking about the city in its whole context? Or are you speaking referring specifically to the the school board when you say the city like the entire city you mean Manny, I'll clarify. Uh, <clears throat> I, I i think you can assume that it means you know what it what what's the biggest problem going on in the city if it's gun violence how can a board of ed member do something about that if it's dirty streets so citywide gotcha. of, okay correct Gotcha. Okay, so for this question, we're gonna go with Ms. Castillo first, Ms. Lemon, Mr. Martinez, and then Ms. Redmond. Sorry, I forgot I was on mute for a second. Um, so, wow, that's a, that's a big question. There's, um, I, I'm going to start with um, exposure and engagement. Um, right. So when we we see a lot of the needs of, of our city um, can stem from very from various reasons. Um, but I guess on the role of the school board member, you know, when we are really offering our students um, exposure to what else is out there, 
um, to all the opportunities and possibilities. Um, I think that things in the city drive a little bit differently. I really do think that our young people move um, the city, can move the city forward. Um, because when you have students that you expose, um, you know, their mindset is different, their advocate, their, what they advocate for is different, their engagement is different, um, but as well as they can go and come back. So you can go off to college, get a technical degree and come back and serve. So whether is it serving as a police officer, um, you know, really exposing us, exposing you in school on what those abilities are and what you can do in that area and coming back. So whether it's a police officer, a teacher, an attorney, any elected official, I think that is very important, but also it allows, it helps students who may be going through things. So whether it's in their families, whether it's mental health, whether it's uh, family issues, getting, you know, maybe involved with the wrong crowd or the wrong opportunity, when you're really providing those outlets um, for students to move towards success and thrive, um, I think that we create consciousness in what you want for the city. You create a different perspective of what the city, you change the behavior of a community. Um, and, and I think we do that vast way through exposure and really giving our students the opportunity to see beyond the city of Patterson, be see beyond the possibilities and really bring that back um, and change your behavior, your friends, your family and so forth and so on. Um, it does trend to change the community, but to really let you go, come back, um, and serve the city as well. So um, I think that would talk about cleanliness of our city, um, when we talk about gun violence, when we talk about um, unemployment, when you talk about many of those things can really be changed um, through, through that exposure and the ability to see moving forward and really creating a support system for all of you to accomplish that. Thank you. When we when we talk about local control, with again, that's that's a real heavy thing. You hear that a lot, about local control, local control. Because when I think about that, I think of community. I think of, you know, collaborating with our mayor and our city council members and really putting, you know, fuel to the fire to really wake up, you know, even from our children. Um, to our seniors to really want to start to feel prideful and to feel proud to have a city, to have a town, to have a street that we can be proud of. So I believe that's number one, bringing it back down to the basis where one, we care about each other as people and as neighbors and care about, you know, what each other's children um, and the children in our community are, are learning. and what. So in short, it's the quality of life, right? Here in the city of Patterson, you know, even as an adult, as someone who, you know, I work here, I work in the downtown area, um, I work on North Main Street, and I'm I'm constantly here. And me personally, it's a struggle to to want to stay here in Patterson. You know, some days I feel like, you know what, I don't have to stay here. I can go move anywhere. I can start over. But it's the part in in in, in my heart of wanting to stay here and wanting to see it get better for the children who, you know, do not have the ability of making those decisions for themselves. So I would say it goes back to teaming up with our city officials, you know, and really talking about conversations that are hard to talk about and really putting our own selfishness and our own agendas aside and really tr truly, you know, listening to our children and making, you know, we can build up a park, but if we're not having programming in the park and other people are taking over their parts. We just made up another space that our children don't have access to. So that's looking at these um, these buildings and these structures and making sure that we're giving our children spaces where they can, you know, constantly grow. Education is not is not just in the classroom. It's throughout the whole city. So as a city, we need to start working together for our children in general. Um, so that's what I say about it takes, you know, let's bring back being prideful of being from Patterson and living here and wanting to make it a better city for everyone. Um, th that, that is such a heavy question. And um, I don't think that there's any, uh, any quick, you know, uh, pretty answer that anyone can provide. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, part of the, you know, the, the conflict lies within the, um, the image or the perception of our city versus the actual reality. 
um, of what we as Pattersonians, you know, uh, feel and experience every day. Um, you know, it, it's unfortunate that folks who do not live in the city of Patterson oftentimes have a very uh, overinflated sense of, of what our city is as compared to what it really is. I think we have to distinguish that. But with that being said, as residents, there's also a sense of ownership that we have to take, um, you know, um, and, you know, in the environment around us. Um, you know, oftentimes, you know, we can't, you know, put the blame on other people for everything that takes place. And I'll just use this as a small example, you know, in my little corner of the city where I live, um, you know, I've taken it upon myself to every morning and every evening. I'm out front, you know, cleaning up, you know, uh, and beautifying, you know, where I live, um, you know, and it's actually spread. Um, and it's a small example. I'm not saying that this is something that's going to, um, you know, like infiltrate and take over. But people and neighbors of mine, they've noticed this and I've noticed that they, you know, that they want to do the same thing. Um, you know, so, you know, being a leader by example of the things that you want to see, um, you know, we, we can't get mad at folks, um, you know, uh, across the city. You know, if we're the very ones who are throwing garbage on the street and then we complain about the streets being dirty. Um, so to that extent, again, those are small examples. Those are just some of the things that we have to take ownership of, um, you know, but uh, the notion of, you know, op of having better opportunities for our young people is something that we can, um, you know, certainly focus on um, and, and providing better opportunities for, you know, for the folks who live throughout the city um, is something we can also do. So, uh, again, that's a that's a heavy question and I don't pretend to have an answer um, that will satisfy every component of it. Uh, but again, you know, just some of the small things that we can perhaps do is just, you know, start by leading by example, by doing the things that you would like to see others around you do. And hopefully that kind of catches on. So to so jump in, I, one of the issues that I do see in the city of Patterson is knowing the legislation of how the city actually works and what departments run what. Um, as a school board member, we have a joint co uh, government committee where we meet with city council members to discuss educational issues and also city city issues. But one of the things that I do see is that our city has a low morale. Um, I think we need to be more engaged as a community and hold each other accountable. We can agree to disagree, but making sure that we move our city forward and not be disrespectful. Um, I think the respect starts with you just to get to know your neighborhood and your neighbors, to make sure that you go out and just see what the issues are in your own surrounding neighborhoods and bring those issues to city council or even to the board of education and we can address them. Um, we see a lot of issues because this is an urban city. So a lot of things that we do see is not more unusual for urban cities. Um, I, the violence, we need to partner up with different uh, organizations one I know that is an organization that's through um, St. Joseph's Hospital that talks about gun violence and what the trauma affects to our students that happens. So I would just say just being more engaged as a, a member of the community and have a better outlook. Um, we're the reflections of the city. I chose to stay here. I'm a lifelong resident. I love the city. I think it could be much better, but I think that we just have to change our own mindset and change the narrative and making sure that anything does not go in Patterson. It doesn't go. We, we have to put our foot down and say, no, it won't happen on my watch or on my time. So as a board member, just being out there in the community, trying to help everybody make this a better city. Thank you. Um, so now we're going to go into our next and last question, um, which is going to be said by Vasanin. Sorry if I... Hi, yeah, my name is Vasan. Um, since the pandemic, I've attended an online high school with space in Patterson. Uh, my question is, what policy changes would you make to improve the college readiness of Patterson students? Thank you. Um, so for this question, we're going to go with Mr. Martinez, Ms. Redmond, Ms. Lemon, and then Ms. Castillo. Um, and then we're also going to just be doing closing remarks uh, after the questions um, for one minute. And I'll put the order for the, for the closing remarks as well in the chat. Great, thank you. Um, so again, another another really, really difficult question to answer. Um, my approach would be a two-pronged approach. Um, before you get to the level of being college ready, 
um, I think we have to make sure that we have a very strong foundation. Um, so making sure that our, our, our basic reading skills are, are where they need to be. So the, the notion in education, up until the third grade, you are learning to read. You're learning the ins and outs and the basics of actually reading. And then after the third grade, you're reading to then learn. That's when you get into the deeper levels of comprehension and understanding. So if you get to the third grade and you don't have the basic reading skills down, the evidence shows that you are going to continue to struggle as you move on. So the first thing we need to do as a district is to continue to build and making sure that our foundation our basic reading skills are as strong as they need to be. It's the equivalent of building a house when your foundation is unsturdy. So if you're building you know, a four-story house, but your foundation is not secure, the top is going to be very wobbly. Um, so we need to make sure that you know, on a basic skills level, uh, our, our scholars who are you know, getting to the third grade, that they're on grade level. Um, and this way, they can continue to progress as they go on. Um, there have been some other um, you know, initiatives in the district um, that we've partnered with the universities, P-TECH, um, is a program where as our young people are partnering with IBM and with Pasek County Community College to actually work towards earning uh, college credits and getting a degree before they even leave the high school setting. The International Baccalaureate Program is another example of some of the things that we've done. But um, the, to basically answer that question, two-pronged approach, make sure that on the uh, elementary level, our foundation is strong. So by the time they get to the high school level, their foundation is firm and they can, can prepare them with the skills that they need to, uh, to be successful in college. Okay, um, one of the things that we implemented as board members, we have a program that we have counselors or guidance counselors start meeting with our, our students as early as fifth grade. Um, I'm sorry, we have a little technical issues. There we go. Um, so um, as early as fifth grade to decide their pathways into high schools. So then when they get into high schools, we start to focus on what college approach that they might wanna attend. Um, helping them with SAT scores, helping them trying to understand financial uh, aid and how their families can qualify for, for financial aid. We didn't want to wait until the student gets into high school because I think that's a little too late to try, try to start talking about college readiness. So right now we're implementing college tours and also we have several different academies that also help our students when they get into eighth and ninth grade that they can start taking college courses to make sure that they're knowing what they want to do when they get to college and be more successful and earn the degree that they want. So that was a very good question. It led me to, just so you all know, on the Patterson Public Schools District website, if you go under policies, and I believe it's regulations, but all the policies are listed there. So this question took me to the policies on programs. So there was two that I read. Um, and what I do appreciate from the incumbents is that they do mention a lot of the programs that the district you know, says or say is there. Um, but more so, again, we have to make sure that everyone has access to all of these programs and initiatives and all the things that the district says that they're doing. So with that being said, the two policies that I looked up, one of them mentions a college week that happens at the fifth grade level. And I thought that was a very great idea. But again, in all, in all things that happens through the district, I feel that maybe only certain schools do them because I asked around, does anybody know of this college week or does it happen? You know, I, I, a few people that I text and they said no. So I would say when it comes to creating programs, we have to make sure that every school, every student is actually participating in these things. So I thought the college week was a good idea, but I think um, vamping that up and making that even a citywide initiative, again, bringing it back to the community um, to make sure all students participate. And then I would say to start making the workshops mandatory because I do know that the district had FAFSA, you know, online FAFSA workshops and other workshops. But I feel that if we, now that we're on, under local control, we can maybe do things to make it mandatory where parents and students, you know, have to take these workshops, you know, even if they have to do it every year, by the time they get to the status where they actually have to do it, there's no confusion about that. Because for me personally, when I was going through college, um, I didn't share this, but um, in my in my experiences, you know, I didn't have a parent who pushed me to go to college. I remember being, you know, at early decision day for Ramapo College, and they almost didn't accept me because my parent wasn't there to fill out the forms, and I had to explain to them that, you know, I am 
the person in charge of myself and that there is no no one here that can sign this. I have to do it. I literally had to cry to them. So I, in that moment, had to make my decision by myself. Um, so there are some students out there who don't have, you know, those parents or that guidance to push them. So we have to make sure that we're giving them the, to, the tools to make the decisions, unfortunately, on their own if they have to. So I would say making those mandatory and doing it, you know, starting even at a fifth grade level and keep it consistent. And then what else that I write down? Um, when we start these plans at the fifth grade level, if we actually can have enough guidance counselors to really track these students to make sure like, hey, just checking in. When you were in eighth grade, when you were a freshman, you said you wanted to do X, Y, Z. But now that you went through a couple of years, what are your thoughts now? So people who are actually tracking and actually following up, similar to an EOF program when you get to college. Um, another program that I went through, just people in places to make sure that you succeed. Um, because again, I didn't have the, the family or you know the background where parents pushed me. I had to fight, figure out these things on our own. So as a district, we need to make sure that we are consistent and true to the, to the um, programs and things that we're saying we're offering and trying our best to truly reach every single child, not just a select few in select schools. So again, there are policies in place, but I would just update them to maybe make them mandatory and, uh, follow, and make sure there's enough follow through where we're catching up with our students and not just waiting till they are senior to say, you have to do this, this, this. You know, they've been exposed to it enough throughout the years where they're confident enough to do it on their own. So this is actually a great question. Um, so when we talk about, you know, obviously, uh, I, I agree with, with uh, my colleague, Manny Martinez, on really starting on that foundation. But as we move up, you know, and, and this is where we come back and we talk about the high school restructuring and we talk about, um, you know, we wanted to give students an opportunity as early as the fifth grade. So we talk about college week and the fifth grade is something new that we really want to push forward so that students, you know, at the fifth grade um, are really getting that exposure on what opportunities they may have, especially when you talk about what the new college academies, I'm sorry, the high school academies would look like. So now they have some feedback on the possibilities out there for them. Then when we get into the high school, we talk, you know, it's about partnerships, which we have with William Patterson, uh, Montclair, uh, PCCC and Ramapo. And how do we expand that now that we are, are going into the new high school pathways so that our students are getting college level courses um, so that now, you know, just like I did, now you can graduate with some credits, you know, as you go move into your college career. Um, but also really counselors are so important when we really have that one-on-one -on -one conversation. It's how do we make sure that we get the funding, um, you know, to make sure that we can onboard counselors where you're having those conversations. What's the process? What can I do next? You know, how much is the application fee? May I, may I, maybe I don't have to pay an, an application fee. What is FAFSA? How do I apply for FAFSA? What is EOF? I think that's very important. Um, unfortunately, we can't mandate um, any of these workshops or, or these courses for students and families, but it's about creating that partnership um, and engaging them. You know, it's how do we bring you into the Patterson Public School life and really work together? Um, and it's we've seen that's worked in other districts, and it's really about um, you know bringing families together to have these conversations. What are your options? Um, sometimes we get to senior year or junior year and like, okay, where are you going to college? I don't know. What do you want to do? I think I wanted to do, but if you have those resources early on where you're able to explore, uh, it'll make your decisions easier for you and your family. Um, you know, also we talked about uh, there's a financial empowerment center that I worked on in when I was at the city of Patterson, and it's really offering students the ability to learn how to manage those finances, whether it's through grants, whether it's through applying through FAFSA, whether it's through savings with your families. So all of these things have to come together um, so that we can really talk about being college ready, the foundation, the opportunities, the counselor, the financial component, and really the options for students who do not want to go to a four-year college and would rather go to a technical school. Um, that's also very important, and we want to give our students those options as well. So thank you. I think everyone answered that question now, right? And um... Hillary, are we going to give everybody uh, just a brief closing statement? Is that the plan? 
Um, it was now if they wanted to do like any closing remarks. No. And what order should they go in? I think I was supposed to go first. They came out, okay. Yes. I would like to thank the Youth Council for this opportunity to um, discuss a lot of the issues that you guys brought to us. Um, I'm glad that you guys are engaged. I hope that you still have more forms like this throughout the year, not just during our election, but so that we can make sure that we have a partnership with the Youth Council. Um, again, I would thank you for the opportunity. And I really and truly enjoyed all your questions. And there's a lot of work that we need to do to improve our district. So I also want to thank you guys. You have done a phenomenal job. Um, you know, you, you are truly leaders of now. Um, you know, the way that you have put this forum together and pushed it forward has been absolutely phenomenal. This continues to be my favorite forum, um, I have to say. And I agree with Nikima. You know, if we can have these conversations throughout the year, I know you, many of you are already part of the restructuring conversation, um, but the restructuring is going to be need more than a few conversations. We really want to partner, especially as we move forward and what you want to see for the next steps. Um, so, so I really appreciate your conversation. I appreciate um, all of your question. I have to say kudos to all of our engineering majors, especially all of the young ladies. I'm sorry I had to mention that. Um, it's very exciting. Um, you know, we, we're really moving. You know, we have so many talented students in the city of Patterson, so many talented young adults. Um, and it's really pushing these organizations and pushing each other um, really to, to succeed. Um, and to really be a voice for the city. So when we talk about moving the city forward, um, that means partnering with all of you to do that. Um, so thank you once again. Um, it is my honor to be here. I love this. Um, and, and I hopefully we can continue to have these conversations moving forward. Thank you all. Thank you. And um, first of all, you know, to every each and every member of the Patterson Youth Council, you guys, you know, continue to to raise that bar, um, you know, of what we want to see from our young people in the city of Patterson. So thank you for organizing this. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you for, for bringing us all together. Um, you know, part of what I want to share this evening is that, you know, the importance and I know some of you may be 18, but most of you are, are, are probably under the age of 18. And I, I'm pretty sure that one of the things that you guys are going to be doing um, soon, if not already, is the vote for me because I can't campaign. Um, the notion of getting the word out to others in your family, um, your friends and your neighborhood about the importance of voting. Early voting has started in the city of Patterson. This is the first time in New Jersey's history where you can go out and vote. It actually started on Saturday. So I would encourage each and every one of you to get the word out. Um, I don't think this is the place to go ahead and plug your own candidacy. So I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. Um, but I, I do encourage you to go out there and, and, and encourage folks to go out there and vote um, because it is indeed your voice. Um, so, you know, uh, October 23rd, which was Saturday, it started, you can vote all the way up to November 1st. Um, then actually, of course, on election day, you can also exercise your right to vote. Um, you know, in closing, I want to share something that I know all the other candidates are probably tired of hearing because I've repeated it, but it's so very true and apropos. Um, I want to say thank you to them, uh, because throwing their hat into this ring is not an easy thing at all. Um, so to, to my colleagues and everyone who's engaged in this election, you know, shout out to you guys for, for putting in the work and for, for showing up and, and fighting for what, you know, we want to see, um, which is ultimately a better, you know, um, you know, environment for our young people. And um, again, while there, you know, there's four people running for three positions, that means, you know, one of us, unfortunately, we're, we're not going to get there. Um, and, uh, you know, although we are opponents in the election, we are not opponents in the work that we do for the city of Patterson. So I do not want us to lose sight of that. At times, you know, elections could get a little contentious and things can be said and things of that nature. Um, but let that not overshadow the bigger picture of why we're doing what we're doing and who we are doing it for, more importantly. So kudos to the candidates, kudos, kudos to all the members of PYC um, for continually, you know, raising the bar and doing a great job. So, uh, you know, come out and vote and uh, encourage your folks to vote. And, uh, you know, if you know, let us know when that vote for me when you can't rally is because I still have my T-shirts from those and uh, that's, that's a great time. So uh, I look forward to that as well. Thank you all and have a good evening. So I would just like to say that all of you have blown me away today. Um, I have been truly encouraged by you all. So thank you for the invitation for having me here. In closing, I just want you all to be encouraged. I hope that with me even running my campaign that I have encouraged 
some youth in my city or even some adults in my city to start using our voices and not being afraid when we see something that's not right. Um, I already see all of you as leaders, so I encourage you to stay active. Again, I would love to reach out and talk to you all about the civic um, trustees, the junior trustees. And then I would also like to take this opportunity to say that um, I am a program manager for Girl Scouts, and one of my roles is to create programs. We serve from 5 to 18 years old. And one question I literally wrote down today was, how can I reach the high school girls? So I would love your feedback on what type of programs you would all like to have. And that's what I'm doing this for, to connect to connect myself to my community, to the children here. Again, whether I'm elected or not, I'm a person who is doing this because this is just what I do with my life. Um, I try my best to reach the youth and to be a person that God can use me to do his work. Um, I am going to use this opportunity to tell you all that, um, to tell your parents, or if you are a voter, that I'm doing this straight from my heart, that I am 1G on the ballot. Tell your parents that you met me today. I would like to say thank you to a seal for, for uh, mentioning my earrings. I literally wore these on my campaign picture last year. So this year, this is the first time I brung them out. So I'm like, um, I'm with the, you know, with the youth today, they should appreciate my earrings. So thank you for that, Asil. Um, I truly enjoyed you all today. Um, we have one week left to do this. This is my second time trying. And again, I already feel like a winner because I feel like I have made a difference in my community and I'm going to continue to work. Um, thank you all again for this time. And don't ever be afraid to just jump out of the box and do what's on your heart because that's exactly what I'm doing now. No regrets. Thank you all. Well, well, thank you. Uh, thank you to each of you. I, I, I'll, I'll just <clears throat> close it out by saying that, you know, back in 2006 when NJCDC started the Patterson Youth Council, we don't run the Youth Council, we facilitate it because it really is youth led and youth driven. Uh, it really was forums like this that I think I had in mind because the notion was that young people ought to have a platform from which they could participate in the civic dialogue here in the city of Patterson. Tonight, I think, is no better example of that. So I want to, I think, first and foremost, thank all of the young people who have been here. We've had approximately 50 people throughout, um, youth council members and others, for taking the time, almost two hours, really, to be part of that civic dialogue here in the city of Patterson. I think we owe a, a debt of gratitude to the four candidates who are with us for your very thoughtful and insightful comments. I really wish that each one of you could win because you all deserve to be there representing the interest of Patterson's young people. Um, I, I do wanna say to the comment uh, Mr. Man Mr. Martinez made, the uh, Vote For Me rally is gonna be on Monday November 1st, that's every year where the Youth Council marches from NJCD to the City Hall. And the message is to vote for me because I can. So they're telling all the people of Patterson, vote for me because I can. not And they wanna make sure that everyone gets out there and exercises their right to choose candidates to help uh, us run, in this case, the school uh, system, but also our uh, city. Um, this was recorded, so we will be posting links on social media to encourage as many people as possible to watch it. I don't think anyone will be disappointed. I think they will find that this has been a very, very um, comprehensive conversation about issues facing youth in Patterson. So thank you, everyone, for your time. Um, thank you, David Gelman. Uh, thank you, Eddie Gonzalez, our other advisor. And of course, thank you, Hillary, other officers, and members of the Patterson Youth Council. And with that, I think we can say good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Night, thank you, candidates. Thank Back you. to school tomorrow. Good night. That's right. <laughs> <laughs>